Thank you, everyone. Hope you're all having a great day, learning a lot in these sessions. So my name is Dan Qualiana. I work at Zebra Technologies. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Zebra, we are a, uh, a company focused on working with enterprise businesses to help them connect their physical assets to the digital world. Uh, we have a global footprint. Um, many of you, if you know Zebra, you might think of us more as a company uh, related with barcodes. We make barcode printers, barcode scanners. So I thought I would just kind of show a little uh, cheesy joke here because everyone knows that for zebras it's not a party until someone brings a barcode scanner. Um, I think I heard one or two people laugh at that one at least. Uh, but we're here today to talk about the Internet of Things, cloud, and mobility. And really, these three uh, things are, they're a big marketing term. You know, I think some of us, maybe we, uh, we hear this over and over, there's a lot of hype around these, but they're all centrally tied together. And what the purpose of this session today is to really help you see how these aren't buzzwords, um, they are things that are being used today. And within the enterprise space, there is a huge opportunity. We have uh, companies that are really needing to transform their businesses to get better visibility into their operations. And as I go through some of the use cases today, some examples of how customers are using the, these technologies, hopefully this is going to be very uh, insightful and helpful for you. So you know, really to start off, I think a lot of you have probably heard some of the numbers around Internet of Things, the growth potential here. You know, by 2020, they're estimating there will be 20 billion devices uh, that are used. Um, while the majority of the devices will be focused on the consumer space, the majority of the money spent on them will be in the enterprise space. So as you look at some of these numbers here, you know, with sensors just focusing on services offered by them and software, uh, they're estimating by the end of the decade a quarter of a trillion dollars with an additional one and a half trillion dollars actually being spent on IoT devices. Um, and really, you know, why do people care about Internet of Things? Why do they care about these connected devices? It's really to enhance their customer experience, to help them have more efficient operations. And so businesses are understanding this. They know that they have gaps, they have needs, they need to enhance their portfolios. And so what we're really here to do is to show this technology exists today and we have ways to deploy it. So, you know, along those lines, this is a quote that I really love. The future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. So, you know, if you guys were in the session before this, we got to hear about how some software companies and Philips are working together, giving some great visibility to things. But, you know, as we look around, you know, not very many people are using these technologies. So we want to show you that these are not that difficult to implement, and we can do it right now. So Zebra has a big focus on something we call enterprise asset intelligence. So when we talk about Internet of Things and connected devices, we don't want to just be able to have a sensor and be able to see the data. That's only one component of what you can do. To really show value here, we put together these three pillars, which are sense, analyze, and act. So on the sensing side, you know, the core of some of the technologies that we focus on have always been around barcoding, radio frequency identification. But as sensors are getting better, we're starting to experiment in different areas. You can see there's a picture there of someone doing a, a thermal image of, uh, of a delivery truck so that you can understand how are people packing these, where are, the, where are the gaps, what's going on. So that's a sensing. But without anything more, that's really not very valuable to anyone. So the next step is doing the analysis. So in our picture there, we're looking at, you know, as we're looking across trucks, what is the most efficient way when you have a package? What are the dimensions of that? How do they all come together? And how can we find the most effective way to do that? And then once you know that, we need to be able to teach people how to take smarter actions. So there's areas where we can get into augmented reality with some glasses where you're physically showing people, here's a space, now that we know the dimensions of our package, here's the space that is the place where you're supposed to put this package, here's the next one to take to be able to put in. And so we have a lot of capabilities as we look across this spectrum. 
So another way, as we're thinking about enterprise asset intelligence that we like to look about this, we have these stair steps. Um, and this is how we help classify what are different levels of value we can provide to our customers. In Zebra, you see a little color difference there. We're really focused on providing hardware and tool sets that cover the bottom three. And we're looking for partners and developers to work with us to really hit those top two. So at the base level, we're talking about device visibility. So Zebra has spent a, a lot of development effort taking our devices and making sure they are connected devices, that you have great visibility to them, what they are doing, how they work. We've then built on a layer of abstraction, some additional APIs, so you can build that within your application and you can do a lot more with it. So that's something to help our businesses. Once we get to asset visibility, then you're looking at our customers. What types of assets do we have? So some of the things we'll go through today in terms of assets, that could be your employees, your customers, that could be the inventory that you have. Um, there's a whole host of things that classifies as assets. But then your operations. So that's how is a business actually running? Businesses, it's amazing, have very little visibility to what they have and what are the different workflows and how effective are those workflows. Once you have visibility to those things, then you start getting into, you know, as we talked about Sense, Analyze, and Act, the Act part, which is really that optimization. And that's how we want to we want to identify what are the different ways that we can, and after analyzing and having visibility to the workflows, how can we optimize them, how can we make them better, and really transform these businesses. And so a few of the examples we're going to go through, one is the National Football League, how they are monitoring their players. Uh, another one, we're gonna get into the retail sector. Um, retail is a space that's needing to really transform the in-store experience. And then we're also gonna talk about something we call cold chain, or how we're uh, transporting goods uh, that need temperature monitoring. So to just make sure you guys really understand the value of what we're doing, um, this is, we really wanted to set the stage of our space here within Zebra and what we see with our customers. So there's this huge transformation. Um, those of you who are familiar with Symbol, Motorola, which is now a part of Zebra, we have this install base of Windows mobile devices. So prior to the smartphones, enterprises were buying computers, mobile computers. They ran Windows Mobile 6.5, Windows CE, you know, operating systems that were created 10, over 10 years ago. These are still being purchased, they're still in the space, but now these customers are seeing smartphones. They're seeing what their devices could be and they're wanting a transformation. Um, at the same time, we wanna make sure we're bringing an enterprise class experience that you don't always get from a consumer device that's really built for a single user and maybe doesn't have the same durability needs. Um, and then as I talked about those devices that are in the field, you know, people wanna update. They, wanna, they want to really make sure that they're transforming those and that opens up this huge opportunity for application development. And those devices, there's a sense of urgency now because Microsoft has ended support uh, for those operating systems in 2020 and that's pushing a lot of these customers to make this change. So really the opportunity that we have here, there's over 15 million of these mobile computers in the field. And by the end of the decade, we're expecting all of these to be transitioning out. And so what that means is there's gonna be application development that needs to be done, moving applications from an old legacy platform to a new one. Because most of these are built off of a Windows Mobile, Windows CE, C Sharp, this is where our Xamarin uh, C Sharp development tools are key. So as we're migrating to Android, to iOS, and other modern operating systems, we want to target you guys to help transform this. And really what we've seen, even those customers moving to Windows 10, over 90%, based on some of the research we have, over 90% of the APIs that were used on these legacy Windows platforms are being deprecated. So even staying on a Windows platform, there's a huge amount of application development needed to happen. So that was kind of setting the stage of what we're talking about, why it's important, and now we're gonna dive into some of the examples. 
So some of you may have heard in the last football season that the National Football League talk about next-gen stats. This is a way that the National Football League is really trying to initially enhance the viewing experience of watching the NFL. And the way they're doing that is they have two quarter-sized active RFID tags under each of the shoulder, uh, shoulder pads of every NFL player. And these are something that's created by Zebra. And then we have sensors that are located throughout the stadium, and they're doing triangulation so they can locate um, every player, what they're doing, down to six centimeters. And so what this has been able to transform into, you're able to, they're able to, through the broadcast, be able to show who is on the field, what formations they're in, and how that's going out. Uh, but then they're also able to give a lot more interesting information. So when someone's running a play, we're, we're able to see what routes are they running. So as a Bears fan, I always want to see when Jay Cutler throws that next red zone interception, was that the wide receiver's fault for running the wrong route, or was that Jay's fault for throwing it to the wrong place? So this is something that helps us really see that. Um, you also can see, you know, in one of those, there's separation. We can see how are these players, how are they tracking the other players? What's the speed that they're going at? How is their speed changing throughout the game, and how is their acceleration? And so with these tags, we're able to provide all of that information. And lastly, uh, last year what they were able to do is partnering with Microsoft on the Xbox, they're able to provide a much more interactive experience. So you can see overlaying, this is what happened on the play. These are the players in their top speed, what was happening, and really give the user a lot more information of what was happening. So this last year was used on the broadcast, and starting this next year, they're going to start sharing the information uh, with the team so they can utilize that in their practices so that they can do a lot more evaluation. Um, and I'm sure you can also imagine the, the value of this by sharing this data and information with video game companies, fantasy football companies, so that they have real live information on everything that the players are doing on the field. So this is a technology that we're using in the NFL, but it opens the doors for some other areas. So we're, we're targeting this. Um, there's a number of soccer teams that are using this uh, globally. In, uh, in Shanghai, China, the, the championship women's team there uses this as well. And then even moving into the enterprise space, uh, Boeing, the aircraft company, they're using the same technology so that they can track the workers that need to paint their airplanes. So when you're painting an airplane, you're on a lift high up in the air, there's a lot of safety concerns. So they're tracking every worker and their harness to make sure they're attached to their harness. If, there's, if they're not attached, then they have certain safety triggers that come into play. And this, uh, this was something transformative for them. And uh, they were able to make some dramatic improvements and really you know, help provide a lot more safety to their workers. So as we're talking about tracking people, there are some other technologies and other use cases even outside of those ones that we just talked about. So in retail, this is, as I mentioned before, this is an area that's undergoing major changes right now. The, the Amazonification and e-retailing uh, that's happening now is making it so customers have a much higher expectation when they're in the store. They want to be able to know what the inventory is, how many options they have, um, and they want that information immediately. They expect store associates to be able to know all this information off the tops of their heads too, because just like if I pull up an app, I can look at that and see what's going on. They want the store associates to see that. And so really, you know, as Zebra has been doing research, we're finding that the technology expectations of the customers are much higher, and the retailers know that by providing this, they can satisfy their customers, give them a much better experience. And so the problem, though, is when you look at the reality, retailers are not there. They do not have the systems in place to be able to provide this to their customers. So as you can see, 50% of retailers can't leverage any of the loyalty data that they have. Um, loyalty programs are pretty common, but they're being underutilized. So the next one, 72% of retailers cannot holistically plan across their channels, 
When we talk about channels, that's meaning online, in-store. When you're in-store, what does the next store have in inventory? Do you want to do store pickup? Do you want to ship to your home? How do you want to manage that? That's something that, our, uh, that the consumers are expecting, but retailers cannot do that because they have very poor visibility into their inventory. Um, and so what we're really seeing is that these retailers are struggling, and that's an area where we can step in and provide a lot more value to them. And so one solution that Zebra offers with this, as we were talking about locating people, is something called Impact. And what this does is it uses both wireless LAN as well as beaconing uh, for low energy Bluetooth to be able to track shoppers as they're going into the store. So through wireless LAN, we can track these people down to 10 meters and through Bluetooth low energy down to one meter. And so you know, the, the possibilities are very, very uh, large here. So you know, deliver personal greetings so people can know they're welcomed into the store. You know their buying habits, and so you can do targeted uh, couponing. Um, you also start to understand what are the habits of the people as they're going into your store. Are there certain areas that people are drawn to more than others? What are the things that are getting the most traffic? And so then the retailers can start taking advantage of that information and doing more with it. Um, and, and even through this, you know, as, if you have a store app, you, through the beaconing, you can start getting notifications about what are some of the featured products, what are some more information about those, so that just based on what product I'm looking at, I can start being, getting push notifications to learn more about that. Uh, and so what we offer here, um, you know, there is analytics and locationing software. We do that middleware layer so you don't have to. Uh, we have some hardware with the beacons. So the, we have several different modes on there, um, going all the way from just kind of a standard iBeacon all the way through to an encrypted one so that we can provide more security. There's software development kits for you to be able to create your applications. Um, and then we have a toolbox that really helps with the deployment of that as well. So we talked a little bit about omni-channels, the different channels of online, in-store, and how stores are trying to deal with that. So what happens in most stores is that they are generally doing inventory counts only twice a year. And so what happens is in between those major inventory counts, their accuracy drops down to levels 65 to 70 percent. And these, this is something that's a critical issue when you're trying to provide that accurate count to be able to tell people, do you have something they can come into the store to get? And so one of the technologies that we've seen a huge growth in the last two years in is RFID. And most of you know RFID, I'm assuming, and really RFID is something that had this huge peak of interest in 2008, and the technology really wasn't ready at that point. So we've kind of, we've already passed through the trough of disillusionment and we're really rising back up. So the cost of tags, RFID tags has dropped to seven cents. So they're not that much more expensive than a standard label. Um, the accuracy is very refined, um, near 100%. And so a lot of the problems that companies were seeing in RFID have been addressed. And as you can see here, you know, so these, are, uh, these quotes are over a year old, uh, but the major retailers are deploying these systems and they are seeing huge transformative impact by the, doing this. Um, you know, Macy's is saying they're, over a year ago, they were fulfilling over a billion dollars in web orders via their stores. Um, Heritage Brands is seeing improvements in their margin and their accuracy. And um, HBC, they're saying new opportunities of how they can leverage the information they're gaining every day. So these are something that's really able to help these companies out. You know, another area, mobility is something. Uh, you saw in a couple slides earlier, the customers are expecting to see mobile devices, digital interfaces uh, within the stores. And so what we can do is, um, working together, be able to go and have, you know, have store associates empowered to give customers the information they're looking for. So as a store associate is working with someone, they can be able to tell them this is what we have in stock. And then they can also say, 
you know, this is what the other store has. They can even start making recommendations on things. If you're buying these pairs of shoes, here are some other accessories that match that, and do some upselling. Um, and this is something that has proven extremely effective for retailers. So another area is really just, you know, how do we enhance that customer experience? Digital signage, using things like the MPAC so that you know you're locationally aware of what pe where people are. Um, uh, we have a personal shopping system so that customers can go through, do their own checkout as they're doing the shopping. Um, really, the possibilities are unlimited for what types of, uh, you, what types of things can be done with connected devices uh, within a store. And these are things that, you know, are, again, are, the shoppers are expecting these types of things from retailers. So what can we do to help enhance that experience? So that's kind of wrapping up the things that I wanted to share in retail. Uh, now I wanted to get into cold chain. So this is one that, uh, you know, every step of the way as you're getting your hamburger to eat, there is an opportunity for us to be providing greater visibility to, um, to the, the different businesses that are involved here. So whether you're a restaurant that needs to be aware of food safety concerns, um, being able to trace that back to the farm of where that food came from, or anything along this way, there's an opportunity here. So I would say one of the most interesting or silliest examples of what we have at the farm level, um, we actually have a, a farm in Switzerland that's using the same tags we have on the NFL players on their cows. And they have software that's able to track where every cow is, and as part of the analysis that they're doing, uh, based on the amount of movement that each animal has, they're able to start uh, doing analysis on the health of that animal so that they're able to proactively manage that herd. Um, I think, you know, we also heard in, uh, in the keynote this morning some things that farmers were doing in Brazil around the farming so that they had better accuracy of what's going on. So the next step is the actual delivery of those goods. So imagine you have an animal or, a, you know, a perishable product. The way that those are transported today, uh, there's a sensor that's put in with, with the goods that are being shipped. Once the delivery is made, they look at that sensor and they see, did my temperature go out of range? If it did go out of range, that whole delivery is now spoiled and essentially they've somewhat wasted that delivery and all of that content. So what the opportunities are here, um, there are smart tags that we can have that are connected through GPS. We can know where these trucks are at all time. We can get real-time information on what those temperatures are, empowering those drivers and the owners to make decisions in real time at the right time so that they can make sure that they're avoiding any of these critical issues. Um, food preparation is another one, just doing date code labeling. When did something arrive? When does it need to be used by? When does it need to be destroyed by? So through this whole process, there's huge capabilities of being able to track and trace everything. And then not even just in the food industry, but also the pharmaceutical industry. Anything that needs to be temperature monitored this type of use case is applicable to. And you can see here that this is a huge industry. So huge amounts of money are on the line every time deliveries are made. And by using old, outdated, non-connected types of technology, we're, there's a mo monstrous amount of waste that we can try to avoid by making some of these technology transitions. Um, and so, you know, an example of something that Zebra has more on our R&D side of things, there's a smart tag where we're working on doing where we would actually be able to print on the battery and some of the sensors. And we have an Internet of Things platform called Zatar where you can create an avatar for each of these different uh, types of labels. So you can get that real-time monitoring of your temperature, real-time monitoring of the location to see what's going on. Um, but more, more interesting than that, I want to give an example of one of our customers, Uberall. They're a Latin America-based uh, software company that Zebra works with. And they're working with uh, one of the largest uh, bottling companies and beverage distributors in the world. And this company, they're responsible for maintaining the refrigeration units where they keep all of their bottles. 
And what they have estimated that they lose a billion dollars in revenue based on out of stock in these types of environments. And so what Uberall has been able to do is to put a sensor in each of these so that they're real time monitoring of the stock levels in these cooling units. And so what they're able to do is provide that data up through their gateway to their cloud platform. And on the cloud platform, the, the operators are able to have visibility of all of the different uh, cooling units to see the refrigerator units, to see what's going on, what needs to be done. And so we're talking about the sensing and the analyzing. But the most interesting thing is they have automatic work order discharges. So once those levels start to get low, it's looking at where are the workers out in the field today? Who can we assign that work order to? And then adding that into their queue so that they are being routed to the appropriate place and only being sent to a place that actually needs to be fulfilled. So these, these are some of the transformative things that we're seeing our partners do. Uh, next, I wanted to show, um, tying in closely with this, a video. So it's a couple minutes long, but it's talking about a warehouse operation. And this video was made, I think, about nine months ago. And we don't have a newer video, but I can tell you that this solution that we're showing here is actually being demoed and betaed at two customers right now. So this is something that actually is live uh, being used. So even though it's uh, fancy cartoons here. It is a real system that's being used. Smart Freight uses real-time sensing and analytics that empower carriers with data to drive revenue recovery and improve performance. Dynamically tracking people, equipment, and handling units in the crosstalk. It allows them to make logical associations between assets to verify that operational processes are clearly coordinated. Most importantly, our new sensing technology makes it possible for handling units to be dimensioned while unloaded without interrupting workflow. Handling units can then be tracked in real time to ensure that they are where they need to be and in proper load order for the next destination in the delivery process. Quick data availability allows managers to make informed decisions in real time as operations occur. Automatic alerts flag dimension discrepancies per individual handling units and their shipments. Changes in weight or dimensions can also be flagged before handling units are shipped out for delivery. Location and technology uniquely identifies handling units, which can then be easily located within large cross dock facilities. Managers know when a handling unit is separate from others in the same shipment or is about to be loaded on the wrong truck. Dimension handling units can help improve truck load efficiencies and reduce costs. Shipping data can be tracked helping managers better understand customer requirements and challenges. Pickup and delivery performance management is also taken into account. Drivers can identify and dimension handling units on the devices to verify customer data at pickup. Crosstalk managers have real-time data that gives them a clear view of their operations. They can now analyze performance metrics based on real-time information and tailor their workflow to improve operational performance. Smart Freight enables cross-stock managers to act on real-time data, a key tenet of Zebra's enterprise asset intelligence strategy. All right, so you guys can see that, you know, some of the things that, that are being done right now are really transformative and really enabling these companies to get a lot more out of their assets and what they're doing. Um, so this is the last example I wanted to show, and this is done by one of Zebra's partners, Paraveda. They actually are exhibiting at Xamarin as well and have a booth right out here. Uh, but they were, uh, they were partnering with uh, one of the Fortune 100 pharmaceutical distributors, and they were looking at how are they managing that supply chain inventory. And initially what they had were scanners that were tethered by a cord to another device, and this was so cumbersome for them that they actually went back to doing paper records. Paper records introduces a huge amount of error. It's very time consuming as well. And so what Paraveda was able to do was really just drive mobility within this solution. And so they were able to, you know, leveraging Xamarin, leveraging some of Zebra's uh, products and developer tools, build a, a solution that was able to make dramatic uh, improvements and able, even doubling the revenue uh, within this division within the pharmaceutical company. 
So if you guys want more information on this example, you know, please stop by Paraveda's booth right out there and they can give you a lot more information on what they're able to do with this company and how they're able to help transform their operations. So the next I wanted to give you guys a little bit inf more information on, on Zebra and what our tools and devices are, what we have, and why they're essentially valuable for the enterprise. So Zebra has an industry-leading uh, portfolio that really covers um, a lot of things from being able to sense and tag things through our barcode, labeling, receipt, and card printing portfolio to standalone scanners and imagers and uh, enterprise-grade mobile computers. We also have wireless LAN equipment primarily built for the enterprise. Um, and so what we wanted to do here was really just give you a little bit of information. When you're thinking of um, deploying mobile computing devices, you know, a lot of people understand there's Android, there's iOS. These are much more inexpensive devices with great capabilities. So why work with an enterprise class device? And so we've I've tried to capture some of the key areas where an enterprise class device really does stand out. And as you can see, you know, over the lifespan of a device, which we categorize as five years because that's the average of what our customers do, an enterprise class device, even with the upfront cost, ends up being 50% uh, uh, lower total cost of ownership. So on the security side, um, I think that we, uh, you know, we showed in the retail space that the vast majority of customers do not trust their retailers. And we see here that over 55% of enterprises around the world have had some kind of security breach. So what can we do for security? This is an, a large focus for Zebra. By having extra layers atop um, the operating systems, by focusing in on some of our networks with additional applications on those. We have one called Air Defense that allows you to get much greater visibility to who is on your network and allowing uh, them different capabilities based on the user level. We can provide top-level security. So data capture. Within our space, we have a very high number of users that are scanning barcodes or doing RFID. So yes, you can do most, many of those same functions with a smartphone. But if you are scanning multiple times a day, there are dramatic improvements that can be done by having a purpose-built device. So assuming someone was doing 500 scans a day, um, going out over the course of a year, they're able to save 55 hours a year per associate. As you look at a larger enterprise going across all the employees, these are dramatic savings that add up. We even have a new device, our TC8000, with a different form factor that allows you to scan while looking at the screen. We're seeing just with that form factor change, customers are having 15 to 20 percent uh, improvements in efficiency with the scanning. So in a job where someone's doing picking, they're in a warehouse needing to do a lot of scanning, this is something that really does add up over time. Uh, power management is another key one. I have a Samsung uh, phone right here, great picture of my kids on it. This battery is terrible. When if, if I need to go and try to use my phone for a work application through my entire shift, there is no way that this can last. I cannot take the battery out, put another battery in. Enterprise devices are built to do that. Every device Zebra has is built to last minimum one shift. The vast majority have very easily hot swappable batteries, and our newest ones even have the capability where you can keep the device on and the, the network connection active as you are hot swapping those batteries out. So this is something to really help you avoid downtime for those customers. Um, charging and other types of accessories, mounts, charging things, that's another area where enterprise devices, these are built for that. A lot of our customers will have many devices. They're going to have uh, a room where they will have rack mounts built up and having the ability to easily uh, put your devices in there, store them, is something that, that helps out a lot. Um, and lifecycle management, enterprise devices, we offer minimum three years that we will sell every device with an additional three years of service on top of that. 
that three years of service means we will offer all of those accessories and consumable parts, such as a battery or on the printer side, a print head for that three years beyond that. On the consumer side, you're looking at one year generally. Um, and lastly, durability. Um, you know, I don't have one with me, but most of our devices are uh, rated so that they can be in very harsh, rough environments and not be impacted by that. So we talked a little bit about some of the, the software layer of what's on there. How do we make uh, these devices work better and make the development of the applications the easiest as possible? So Zebra offers extensive, on the mobile computer side, extensive development tools. So we do have an EMDK for Xamarin. Uh, the Xamarin SDK there is focused on the scanning functionality as well as setting up profiles. A profile is for each customer or different types of users, you may have different settings you want to give them. So we have that capability built in there. Um, management, how do you deploy multiple devices? How do you make sure those proper settings are in there? Um, how do you get visibility to your devices in the field and know what's going on with them? Um, there are other utilities. So um, enterprise home screen. You want to make sure, or the customers want to make sure they have control over what their users are doing on those devices. You can lock in single applications. You can make different users have visibility to different things, have complete control over how that uh, device is being used. Um, and lastly, we help to work with some of the app distribution through App Gallery. We have things for voice so that um, you, the users can be talking and do um, have voice to text as well as being voice talking to them so that they can be working hands free. On the, uh, the other side of our business, on the printing side, uh, as people are being able to print their barcodes, uh, we launched two days ago a Xamarin SDK. And this is a portable plugin. Um, it covers Link OS as well as Zebra Link printers, so that means ZebraLink are the legacy, the older versions. Link OS are our more modern devices. So this goes across all of them. Um, and really, the way that we built this out, um, uh, Robin West is our architect who did this. She's at the event here. So she's here to be able to answer any questions. But what she did was, Zebra's philosophy has really been to work equally across all devices. So we have a multi-platform SDK with very similar functions. With Xamarin, what we've been able to do is have um, actually pull those in together so that you'll see commonality across those. You can write once and deploy uh, across all of these operating systems. And so really, that, that's the, the majority of what I wanted to cover. Uh, but Zebra does have a, a large developer community. And for any development questions, we would love for you to, to connect with us. Our site is at developer.zebra.com. Um, we're working on enhancing this uh, so that we can get a better user experience. We've started doing a lot more developer events. So for those of you, um, you know, whether, no matter where you're based, we're starting to do workshops uh, throughout the United States, throughout Latin America, and throughout uh, the Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Um, and we're working on getting some going in, in Asia as well. We also have a monthly webinar series that we're trying to cover developer topics, and we're always looking for feedback from you as well. Uh, for those of you who are a software development house, Zebra has a partner program, uh, an independent software ISV partner program that gives you some sales, marketing, and technical benefits of how to work closely with us and get in contact so we can help promote your business, your applications, and jointly go to market together. So I just want to say thank you for your time and wanted to know if anyone has any questions. So I guess you know, one last thing, we are holding a raffle for a drone, and I'm hoping that's not the only reason you guys were here, but we are doing that. Uh, Robin's in the back of the room, and we have some cards, if you guys can just write your name, contact information, and then at 6.30 at our booth, we're gonna be drawing those names to, to hand the, the drone out to one lucky winner. So thank you everyone, and please feel free to stop by and ask me any questions or go to our booth.